All right, so let's bring this baby home here. Let's look at, uh, check how you did here. So, one thing to keep in mind here when you start these problems off is remember you're trying to undo what happened to uh, good old x there. So if we're trying to undo what happened to x, first thing we need to do is set up the problem here and let's uh, replace that f of x with a y. And then the next thing that we should have done there is took the y and the x and switched them around, right? Uh, did you remember to do that? Okay, so now once we're here, now we're just going to get y by itself. So just like solving any old algebra problem. So we're good to go here. We have two steps here. First thing, uh, let's do our addition. Let's add the 7 and move it over. And then let's move on to the multiplication division here. In this case, we're going to divide both sides by 5. Now notice in this situation here, uh, we actually have that x plus 7 quantity already there. So make sure that you divide both of those by 5. So that way we end up with this, x plus 7 quantity, x plus 7 divided by 5, giving us our y. And then we can slap that uh, f of x, uh, that inverse of f of x notation on there. There we go. There's your inverse. All right, let's take a look at this situation here. Suppose we want to graph this function and then write and graph the inverse. I will say this, it doesn't really matter what order you want to do this here. Um, just notice that there's going to be some situations where... Um, Maybe graphing the inverse and then getting uh, the function from there is, can actually be a good move. Um, other cases, it's better off to get the inverse first, write it, and then graph what you wrote there for the inverse. Uh, personally, I don't, I don't care which way you do it. The whole purpose of this situation here is just to get you to see um, how those inverse functions are related once again, just to bring, a, bring this thing full circle. So if I were to do this first here, and I wanted to graph this, and you know, I just thought of something here. The reason why graphing could be beneficial for some of you is a lot of you might have were really catching on to the trick of just reflecting over that line y equals x. Um, so if you're struggling with your operations, your algebra operations that we were trying to pull back here, then realize another option for us could have been to graph it. So that's what we're doing here. So if we were to graph 3x plus 6. Remember, we have our y-intercept already in place there of 6, and then our slope was 3, so we got to go up 3 and over 1, or we can reverse it. So here we go, reverse. Reverse, reverse, re reverse, reverse. Yeah, I just did DJ Casper. Okay, so here's your line. There we go. So now what we need to do is if we wanted to graph the inverse, you got to reflect it over that good old line of y equals x. Pretty easy one to make on a, on a graph, isn't it? Because it's just going from corner to corner if you got a perfectly squared off graph. So boom, there it is, line y equals x. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to reflect it over that line. And so this is not too bad. Now that we already have all these points here, let's just go ahead and reflect them. Notice this point that's right on the line is not going to go anywhere. Uh, we can get these, I'm going to pick up these two here. Uh, realize we're just going about right there, right? And this one, uh, notice if I'm counting the uh, diagonal length here, looks like two diagonals there, so we'll go two more diagonals. There we go. This one, just one diagonal going perpendicular there, so there we go. And then you can kind of let your concept of slope take over here with these ones, right? There's really no need to move these other ones in the same fashion because you got a nice little pattern going here for you, right? It's going up one to the right three, up one to the right three, so we can fill the rest of those in that way good time saver there. Sweet. So there we go. There's our line. And now, for those of you that may have struggled with being able to write the inverse with your opposite operations there, now if you just focus on that red line here, some of you in your Algebra 1 uh, days were probably pretty good at looking at a line and spotting the y-intercept. I'll use a different color spotting that good old y-intercept right here and then that pattern for slope and be able to write a line in y equals mx plus b form. So if we were to write this line as y equals mx plus b, it would look something like this. Uh, what's the y-intercept here? Um, y-intercept's negative 2, but what's our slope? We're going up 1 to the right 3, up 1 to the right 3, up 1 to the right 3. So wouldn't our rise of a run be one-third, a positive one-third? And then we can slap x in there, 
and then our y-intercept here, which was a negative 2, we can write just like that. And then, oh yeah, what else do we need here? We need our inverse f of x notation. There we go. So there we go. We just wrote the inverse there. Awesome job. Realize if you were to go about doing this by switching your x and the y, uh, realize we would have subtracted 6, so our function would have looked something like this, x minus 6 equals 3x. And then what would you have done here once you've divided by 3? But then when you divide this whole thing by 3, realize you can divide that by 3 and divide that by 3, and notice what we end up with. We end up with this right here. This is actually saying the same thing as that, if you really think about it. Okay, so I want to close with this. Now that we've seen uh, graphing with uh, inverses. So if we were to look at this type of a situation, here we have two functions. Okay, so here's one. Kind of reminds me of those exponential growth functions, right? And here's the second one. There's decay. What if I were to ask you if these things were inverses? And there's a spot on your note sheet. So to close today, I'd like you to write a little bit about what you think, or how would you respond if I were to ask you if these were inverses? What would your response be? All right, so we'll talk about this tomorrow. Um, good luck on this work, and uh, go Tigers!